Hey guys, welcome back to an interesting video on Wild Rift. So today we're back with our Zeri updated complete guide. And now as usual, of course, don't forget to uh, check out the Zeri basic guide we released earlier today. Of course, for our skills, leveling order, tips and tricks, as well as combos. Now, it's actually kind of a surprise that I haven't done Zeri all the way until now, considering that Zeri is one of my... Well, it isn't one of my favorite champions to play, but after like Lucian and Jin, um, you know, other champions like Zeri, Kai'Sa, and Zaya are like, you know, my next couple of favorites after Lucian and Jin. But anyways, um, it's I, I feel Zeri is really hard to play in this meta. I, I feel that like certain champions like Zeri, Twitch, and Jinx, like the hyper carry champions that um, you guys saw from my tier list that I put like in the A plus tier that I said are still, you know, serviceable, but um, they're just inferior to like Kai'Sa and, and Tristan. I find those champions kind of pretty hard to play because honestly, the early game isn't too strong and you kind of struggle a little bit in the early game. But anyways, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about Zeri's loadout. So, um, not going to complain about it anymore. Let's jump straight into the build and talk about what I build on Zeri. So, first up, we go for Shield Bow. Now, Shield Bow, as we know, is no longer a very good first item anymore. However, when you really think about it, Zeri kind of sucks with any other first item because you don't want to go Phantom Dancer first item on Zeri. Uh, Zeri doesn't really care too much about attack speed, unlike other champions like Jinx or Tristana that you can't afford to go for Phantom Dancer first item. You can go Bloodthirster first item on Zeri, but if you do that, you're going to have to go for Phantom Dancer second and Shield Bow third. So, I mean, that could be viable, honestly. So you could maybe go for something like this. Uh, but overall, I felt personally that Shield Bow first item still was the best for Zeri, although it, it that, that didn't give too big of a shield anymore. I still think it's probably the best first item for Zeri. It gives her... Uh, of course, the all of the base stats that you want, um, AD, crit, uh, physical vamp, attack speed, as well as the lifeline passive, an additional physical vamp when you drop below a certain HP threshold. Then you go for Phantom Dancer, and Phantom Dancer, of course, gives you a little bit more AD, gives you crit and a lot of attack speed, gives you 55% attack speed total, and of course, a lot of movement speed when you, of course, have the Spectral Waltz passive stacked up. And this movement speed, of course, is really important for Zeri because we know that Zeri, like her most like important stat is like movement speed and lifesteal. So uh, basically with all the movement speed, you can sort of like kite around fights and, and run in and out, um, kiting people down, blasting people, etc. And finally, we have, not finally, but next up we have Bloodthirster, which of course gives you a huge injection of AD, pretty much gives you almost as, uh, as much AD as like these two items combined, just slightly below. Crit, Gives you the physical damage, of course, as I just mentioned, is really, really important on Zeri. And, of course, you get the Bloodstorm passive, which gives you the additional shield. Now, for your boots, um, you honestly have, have a couple options here. You could uh, go for defensive boots, because Zeri is pretty short range, so you generally are going to be in the thick of the fight. You could even go for Boots of Fear for additional movement speed. Uh, but I don't really like going for that when you have uh, Phantom Dancer in the build. Or you could even go for Gluttonous Grease to, once again, get even more... Um, healing, which is what I do majority of the time. Then, for your enchant, you go for either um, stasis or you go for QSS. It's pretty much a 50-50. QSS on Zeri is a lot more important than a lot of other champions because if she gets like locked down in a fight for like a second, uh, you know, she cannot like just run away and DPS, which is basically what Zeri mainly wants to do. So for your last crit item, you finish it off with IE for, of course, the boost of crit damage. And for the Armor Penetration item, you go for a Moral Reminder, a little bit of AD, of course the Armor Pen and the Grievous Wounds. You can actually swap uh, this to go earlier if there's not a lot of healing or not a lot of like um, tankiness on the enemy team. So, um, you know, you could go for IE earlier. And uh, for the runes, you go for Lethal Tempo for the attack speed and to of course stack up. Allowing you to ex exceed the attack speed cap is also pretty important because uh, Zeri, of course, attack speed is capped at 1.5. But with Lethal Tempo, you can go a little bit higher than that because of Lethal Tempo's passive. So, afterwards, you of course go for Hunter Vampirism for the healing. This is an obvious one because, you know, Zeri healing is really important. Bone Planing, of course, Anti-Burst or Perseverance if there's a lot of CC on the enemy team could be useful. And for your last... Uh, inspiration is pretty interesting because a lot of top Zeri players are taking mana flow ban and I've taken it myself and I realized that it's actually, actually pretty good because Zeri spams her Q a lot and her W a decent amount as well so you actually run out of mana relatively fast so mana flow ban is actually a pretty good uh, room because nothing else is really very useful you don't need transcendence because your Q and W cooldowns are pretty low it doesn't work on your E 
um, you don't really need Nimbus Cloak because you already have that, that uh, the Ghost, so you don't really need Nimbus Cloak. So your choice is basically between Sweet Tooth and Manifold Band, and between the two, I, I think Manifold Band is probably better. And for your spells, you of course have Ghost and you have Flash. Of course, as I said, Zeri wants to run around and such, so Ghost is going to be really, really helpful. Exhaust is also another spell that you can take because Zeri has pretty short range, so you are going to be in Exhaust range majority of the time, so Exhaust is pretty viable as well. But anyways, with all that out of the way, let's jump straight into talking about our gameplay. Okay, so jumping straight into the gameplay. Now, as usual, of course, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Any questions, queries, or remarks, feel free to leave them in the comments below. So, I'm pretty sure it's pretty obvious by now, uh, based on the length of this video, but this is a very, very short gameplay. It's like a 12-minute game, really, really short. Um, honestly, it's a, it's a pretty stompy game, uh, but... Don't worry about that too much. We're gonna have another Zeri video tomorrow, so I'm gonna be posting another Zeri supplementary guide tomorrow on Runan's Hurricane Zeri. So we have another Zeri gameplay there that's gonna be a lot more exciting than this one. I mean, I say exciting, but it depends on what you really like. Some people like like even matches. Some people like storms. Some people like comebacks. Personally, um, I don't really have any preference when playing the match uh, or even watching uh, um, content. Uh, I kind of just like all of them, just like Wild Rift. So. Any, any anything is kind of good in my opinion. So anyways, yeah, this is a little bit of a stompy one But I think it still shows what Zeri can do here. So here we're against a Swain and a Vayne So Vayne thankfully for me has, uh, you know, short range as well and Vayne also uh, Doesn't have a strong early game. So uh, in this sort of situation where we are against like a, you know, like a Vayne it's actually pretty good because it's a pretty free lane because you see we, we are fighting now but we don't actually have to so um, but we are indeed fighting so you can see that we are kind of destroying the, the Vayne and, and the Swain at the moment Leona gets a little bit over aggressive and ends up just dying here Vayne tries to fight me but she doesn't realize that she's fighting behind all of the minions that's why I turned onto her and I got the kill so as I said, there's still a lot of learning that can be done from, from you know this particular gameplay. The important lesson there, if you really want to, to watch it again, is you rewind. The moment Vayne walked past my minions, I attacked her. Because why? When I start to attack her, she'll attack me. And when she attacks me, my minions will all attack her. I had like 5 minions there blasting onto the Vayne. I think it was like a cannon and like 3 range creeps or something like that. Um, of course, the melee creep couldn't reach her. But they were all blasting her, so you will never win a trade. Uh, in the early game when there are minions involved. So the Vayne should never have chased me past my minions. Um, so that's just a mistake made by the Vayne. I basically just took advantage of Vayne trying to be greedy for the kill and all I did was turn around and start attacking the Vayne and Vayne um, you know, took aggro from me and the minions and you can see she just basically died in a jiffy. So anyways, um, now that we've got that one kill, we're coming in uh, back into the lane with a Noon Quiver and a Longsword. Leona goes straight on in. Here I'm blasting the Vayne. I slow her with the W. Uh, she is forced to flash because um, if not, she's going to die because of the slow from the W. So she is basically um, back to like 0 HP. She has to recall and uh, recoup her health. Uh, instead, we are not going to engage onto Swain. I flash forward for the ult because Lee Sin is here. I believe Lee Sin can finish the kill. Here you can see Lee Sin goes in. Um, unfortunately, doesn't finish the kill, but thankfully I was in the area um, to go in under tower and finish off the kill. Uh, but unfortunately, Lee Sin does end up dying for it, uh, which is pretty uh, unfortunate <laughs> of a situation. Um, anyways, here Vayne tries to go in on me, but you know, here is another mistake made by Vayne. I might be low, but uh, odd number fights are really, really bad. You don't want to go in on me when I have a Leona right beside me who has, you know, uh, all of her CC, her root, and her stun, and, and all all that all that jazz. So you don't want to do that because if you go in on me, you're gonna get stun rooted, and you're just gonna either you're gonna die or you're not gonna get the kill, and you're gonna be put low, and you're gonna have to recall again. So Vayne, another huge mistake. Honestly, a lot of the the reason why this game is really stompy is because the Vayne and the Swain make a couple of mistakes in the early game, like what you saw here, and they pretty much lost the lane for themselves. Here, I'm not doing anything special here. I'm just uh, firing minions and I'm just taking advantage of their mistakes. I really am not doing anything special to to sort of um, Win out the game here and Swain here actually makes another mistake He actually ends up tanking the minions while trying to destroy the ward which actually freezes the minions outside of our tower So this makes it such that they have to come up all the way and farm uh, instead so here um, you can see that the minions are aggroed onto me and Leona. The minions are kind of kept outside the tower and, and you know, the freeze is kind of still there. I, you know, destroy the minion wave and reset the wave to the middle. Um, 
could have actually kept the freeze up if I really wanted to, but you know, I think that, you know, I, I kept the wave in the middle, I think that they're gonna wanna fight. You can see that this Vayne and the Suede are really, really aggressive for some reason, uh, even though they are now down a couple of kills already. You can see that they're still trying to fight. Here Vayne goes in, here Leona hits a beautiful ult. I'm able to out both of them and start blasting both of them. Here both of them are really low. I focus the Vayne first to get the kill onto the Vayne, and now I'm trying to focus the Swain. Swain could have escaped if he wanted to, but once again, he turns back around, tries to attack me, and ends up dying for it. Like, you know, Swain is not going to be able to kill me. I don't know why he's turning around. He used his cooldowns. His ultimate is not going to be able to kill, kill me by himself. If he ran away, waited for his cooldowns, turned back, he might have had a chance to kill me. But if he just stayed there, he wasn't going to kill me. So anyways, I'm starting to build towards my Phantom Dancer. Uh, and Phantom Dancer is amazing in this match. So Phantom Dancer is great. I mean, honestly, basically, Phantom Dancer is great in every match. It's kind of like Zeri's default build, but it's even better in matches where you can kite people. So here you can see, like, I can kite Darius, I can kite Swain. To some extent, I can even kite Vayne and Volibear, although they are a little bit hard to kite because Volibear has the movement speed and Vayne has the tumble. But, you know, they're still kiteable to a certain extent. So anyways here, uh, you can see that there's a huge Herald fight, and, uh, and uh, basically it's a 1v1 between me and the Vayne. Here you can see I'm just dashing forward and just getting damage onto the Vayne. Cause now I'm like five kills. I have like five kills. There's no reason for me to play safe. She's zero and three. I have one one and a half um, items. She has like uh, about I don't know three quarter of an item. So I shouldn't be scared of her at all. She should be re really really scared of me. So here I, I can play aggressive if I want to. But here what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to focus down the minions. Why? Because dragon is up and dragon's the next objective. So I want to clear these minions and rotate to dragon, which is exactly what I'm doing here. Taking out the control ward on my way there. Now Lee Sin has decided to go and take a detour to farm the red buff, unfortunately. So uh, that prior is not going to matter too much here. Vayne nearly steps up and gets caught by Leona. Again, I don't know why she wants to walk so close to that bush that's unwarded. Here you can see I'm getting a lot of poke onto the Vayne. Here I'm dashing onto her face. She's almost dead. Leona actually hits the stun and because of that, Vayne is dead again. So here a fight starts to break out, um, Ari goes down, and Volibear is going on to our Lee Sin. So here, um, Leona manages to flash forward to get the root onto the Volibear, and we finish off the kill onto the Volibear. Now I'm 7, 0, and 0. Somehow I've gotten all of the kills and no assists uh, so far in this game. It's one of those lucky games where I actually managed to get all of the kills, and I'm now super duper fed. You can see from my goal, I'm at like, you know, nearly 7k gold, and you can see like on the enemy team that the most gold on their team is actually Swain of all people with 4.4k gold. I have no idea how, um, I mean I do know how because he has 3 kills, but his whole team has no kills, only Swain has kills, and, and like honestly at this point you can see that um, the enemy team basically has no shot at this point. Everyone there has died at least twice, um, the only person there with kills is Swain with 3 kills, and yeah, there is a world where Swain can carry the game for his team, because Swain, like, you know, Swain when he gets fed, he gets tanky and he does a lot of damage. Uh, but unfortunately, in a world where you have a 7 kill Zeri on the enemy team, you can never really get tanky enough to stop a 7 kill Zeri, at least not uh, anytime soon. So I'm completely, you know, not worried at all. Here I've gone for my Phantom Dancer. In this game, I actually went for Boots of Fear uh, for even better kiting, but as I said, after more testing, I kind of decided it wasn't too good. Anyways, here. We go in with our ulti, we get two two more kills, and here is another another low HP target, which is the Ari. Uh, I was initially trying to reach her, but I realized that that's not going to be possible, so I'm just going to hit back and um, farm some minions. Now what I could have done here is, I could have actually gone for that Grom to deny the enemy the Grom, but um, in the gameplay itself, I just decided that it was way more important to push in, get the minions, and uh, see if I can get this tower. So uh, this school of thought wasn't wrong as well, but it's always nice to deny some... Uh, some enemy uh, farm. So here anyways we get the tower. Um, getting this tower is really important because we are already so fed. 7, 0 and 2 now got our first 2 assists of the game and this this means that we're extremely fed so we want to be able to rotate around the map and translate our lead. If you realize we really only have been in our own lane and just killing the Vayne and Swain mostly on repeat aside from that one dragon fight. So we want to be able to go to other lanes and uh, translate our lead to other lanes as well. I mean, honestly, our team is doing quite well for themselves. Orion is 4-0-4, uh, Lee Sin is 2-1-5, and, and Orin is 1-0-2, so they don't, they don't necessarily even need our help. Uh, but here, Ari is forced to ult and flash to escape. So, uh, you know, when you force Ari to ult and flash to escape, like, you know, it's, it's honestly pretty funny because it means that she's basically useless at this point. Swain tries to go in with, her, with his ultimate. 
tries to get the job done. Here, Ari sticks around for some reason, so I'm just dashing past the Swain and killing the Ari first. Here, Vayne tries to come in. I'm not too sure what she thinks that she's gonna do, but it's not really working. Here, you can see the kiting from the Phantom Dancer and the Boots of Fury together coming in. So, um, Darius couldn't reach me to hook me, and Swain couldn't reach me as well. Volley Bear tries to come in, but he just he just gets CC'd by Leona Ultimate and uh, gets stunned. Here, we're just now we're turning the fight around, and now we're chasing them. Here, you can see I'm flashing forward for the for the vein, I don't get her. I get the slow onto both of the enemy enemies under the tower, and I was able to finish the kill onto the Swain. And I believe Orn got the other kill. Here, Ari is actually back up alive. I get charmed. Uh, shield bow pops, and I'm <laughs> I'm just gonna run because I'm really really low now. Without that shield bow, I actually would have died from the tower shot. But thankfully, that does not happen. So here, I'm just gonna back. I'm 10 0 and 3 at this point in time. You can see that in this match, I decided to go for a stasis instead of a QSS because I felt there wasn't much to QSS. Like, there is a Volley Bear stun, there is a charm, uh, but aside from that, there's not much I can QSS. Whereas, if I get a stasis, if I find myself in a bad position, I can always pop the stasis to, to buy time for my team to help me. Uh, of course, my entire team is fed. There's already like a 10k gold lead at 10 minutes uh, at this point. So, th this game is pretty much won unless we, you know, have a major throw. But we all know that. You know, when teams are extremely ahead, uh, it's really common for them to throw because of how ahead they are. Happens to, the, happens to me, happens to my team, happens to the enemy team. That's why I don't really surrender most of the time. Here, anyway, I get caught. I pop the ulti into the stasis, and here you can see that this is exactly what I was telling you about. My team is able to buy time, and I'm able to turn the fight around and basically kill both the Darius and the Swain. Here, now Ari is the next uh, target, uh, but enemy team has had enough. They end up surrendering, and it's just a really... Really stompy game, we didn't die at all, we, uh, that was the closest, like those two times were the closest we got to dying, but we managed to stay alive and win the game. So here you guys can, as you guys can see here, I'm gonna leave you guys with the stats as usual. Once again, stay tuned for the more exciting Zeri gameplay tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for watching the video, and goodbye.